This is an NVIDIA RTX 3060, and this is an AMD RX 6700 XT. And comparing these two graphics cards to one another would typically be an unfair comparison. Yes, both of these GPUs have 12 gigabytes of memory, and they both fundamentally achieve the same task. But the RTX 3060 is the second lowest performing card NVIDIA currently sells, while the RX 6700 XT is right in the middle of the performance stack, beating the 3060 by about 50% more frames, which makes sense. We're comparing a $330 RTX 3060 to a $480 RX 6700 XT. And when you pay more, you get more, right? Well, you would be very much mistaken right now. Because of how the GPU market has been shaping up recently, the 6700 XT has been consistently selling for less than the 3060, meaning the traditional way that you would buy a graphics card based on MSRP is currently the worst way to buy a GPU and could easily cost you more, while providing less performance, even if you compare Nvidia to Nvidia or AMD to AMD. So because the GPU market is an absolute minefield right now, we're going to go over each card's performance and real-world pricing data to fully understand which GPU is going to offer you the best value and the most gaming performance for your money because that card that you've been eyeing could very well cost you more compared to another higher performing card that will render you more frames while also being cheaper and stay tuned to the end because I'm also going to give solid AMD and Nvidia recommendations at four different price ranges up to $250, $500, $1000 and over so GPU pricing and comparison let me explain so I have a question are you an avid PC enthusiast stuck with that ugly ass Windows watermark ruining your gaming and streaming experience? Well, I have great news for you. WhoKeys is a software licensing website dedicated to getting you affordable keys. And the best part is you can get rid of that watermark in a matter of minutes. All you need to do is head down to the video description, click the sponsor link and enjoy an additional 25% off using my coupon code TL20. With PayPal checkout and quick key delivery, all you need to do is hit the Windows key, type activate and paste your key right here to become fully activated. It really is that simple and that cheap. So head down to the video description if that sounds right for you. And thank you Hookies for sponsoring this video. So before we jump into the data, including MSRP versus current new listings, let me help you understand what cards that you should be focusing on, which ones will actually give you the frame rate that you're planning on targeting, whether you're gaming at 1080p, 1440p, or 4K. This data has taken two of us hundreds of hours to collect across my own data aggregated with dozens of other reviews, benchmarking a plethora of games, including ones optimized for AMD as well as ones optimized for Nvidia, to give us the most holistic representation of each card's performance and based on the Ryzen 5800X3D. So if you have a different CPU, whether more or less powerful, you can adjust the numbers appropriately. So what we're going to do is take a look down here. And what we have is frames per second, the average frames per second for current generation and previous generation cards. And what I want you to do when having a look at this graph is essentially if you want to achieve 60 frames per second, which is kind of the minimum baseline for most gamers, then anything on this sheet will essentially do you justice. You'll be able to play most games at that resolution at that frame rate. So for example, the RX 6500 XT will be able to deliver about 65 frames per second at 1080p across our test suite. But if you want to achieve more than that, say you have a high refresh monitor, you're running 144 Hertz, you're realistically going to want to target about 144 frames per second. You'd then want to be stepping up to the RX 6700, on average providing 145 frames per second in our test suite. And that's realistically the way that you have to look at this graph. If I have a 1080p monitor, 144 Hertz, realistically anything 6700 caliber or above would do me justice. It would be a great experience that would match the refresh rate of my monitor. Pretty ideal. But the 6700 may not necessarily be the best value card. You may be able to find a card that has more performance at a lower price. And that's pretty much the point of these videos. So if you want to target 1080p 60 frames per second, you're looking at the RX 6500 XT or better from AMD and the RTX 3050 from Nvidia or better. For stepping up to 144 Hertz, you'll be looking at the RX 6700 from AMD and more like the RTX 3060 Ti, the original version that came out a couple years ago. And anything better than those cards is just going to give you a better experience. So we'll see if we can find you a good price on something even better than that. And then for 1440p for AMD, you're looking at more like the RX 6800 XT, I believe. And then for Nvidia right here, you're looking at the RTX 3080 Ti. So let's hope that we can get a good price on that. And then for 4K, 
you can read it as you see fit. So now you know which cards that you should be focusing on, what your minimum baseline is basically, and what cards will be above that. Let's have a look and see what the prices look like. Starting with MSRP. Now, MSRP is a bit of a funny concept. In theory, it's meant to be the price of something that you would buy. In reality, it seems to be relatively meaningless. Let me show you. This is what the pricing should be for all of these graphics cards, with that shown on the left-hand side right here. And this will remain consistent throughout all of the graphs that you see. The MSRP will be on the left-hand side, which will allow you to be able to compare it quite easily. And realistically, you would expect that performance and price should scale appropriately with this. It makes sense, right? The more you pay, the more performance you get. In fact, if we take the MSRP and we run the cost per frame analysis on that, we get this result, which don't look into it too deeply. I mean, you can if you want, but it's gonna be pretty much irrelevant because the likelihood of you getting an MSRP product is very, very slim. So what we need to do is essentially rerun this calculation on real world pricing because that's actually what you're going to get. But for those of you that were wondering, at MSRP, the RTX 3060 Ti, the G6X version that came out quite recently, not the one that came out two years ago. Thanks, Nvidia gets very confusing. But anyway, if we assume that has the same MSRP as the original 3060 Ti, it actually has the best value across the board. But that is with the assumption that the MSRP is $400. Real world pricing does not reflect this. We take a look down at the next chart right here. We have MSRP versus current new listings. As I mentioned before, the MSRP for the cards is on the vertical axis allow you to be able to compare it quite easily. But what I've also included is the current new listings of what I can find online. And I've been tracking these prices for a very long time now. So what we're gonna do is scroll down right here. And as you can see, pricing compared to MSRP is kind of a bit all over the place. Most of AMD's lineup, especially RX 6000, has seen pretty decent discounts. And a lot of these prices you could pretty consistently get, especially nowadays, now that RX 7000 is out. But NVIDIA, it's a bit of a different conversation at this point. Nearly all of them are above MSRP. And bear in mind that when we're talking RTX 3000 series, this MSRP for most of these cards is two years old at this point, and you would expect to see a discount. And part of me is kind of annoyed that it hasn't happened, especially when AMD is providing a discount on their products. But you also have to remember that it's built on a different node from a different manufacturer. AMD being TSMC, whereas for the 3000 series for NVIDIA, that was Samsung 8 nanometer node. So there may be something that NVIDIA can't control, but I'm not saying that it is that, it's just worth bearing in mind. The first time that we see a discount on an NVIDIA product is right up at the high end. We're talking RTX 3080 Ti, which is already a $1,200 card. In fact, probably the better way to show you this is if I go down here. What I've done is I've graphed the lowest new price versus MSRP as a percentage. So take the top result, for example. The RX 6500 XT, MSRP of $200, can be had for 77.88% of that, which means that the price for it was $154.99. Makes sense, right? So you're getting about a 22% discount. And what I've also done is given you the average for that. For AMD RX 6000 series, it's about 20% discounted compared to its launch MSRP. But for NVIDIA RTX 3000 series, as you can see right here, on average, you're paying about 7% more than what you should be compared to launch MSRP. So now that we know that we should ignore MSRP and follow the pricing that we have real actual listings for, which I will provide links below for you, and if I find anything cheaper, I will make sure to keep them updated. What we should do now is figure out which cards are the best value at 1080p, 1440p, and 4K. So before I make solid recommendations at a given price point, let's take a look at our cost per frame analysis starting at 1440p with real world pricing. What I want to do is start by talking to you a bit about this graph and how to read this data. The pink lines that you see here is the cost per frame, how much you're paying for each and every frame rendered at 1440p for these results. Then the second line in, the blue one, is the real world pricing that I've been able to find. And again, pretty consistent pricing for a lot of these models, but I will update them if I find something cheaper. Then on the left hand side is the actual frames rendered, how much you should expect to achieve from those cards. So let's take a look at a couple of these options, which are either really good or absolutely terrible. Okay, so starting out with the good, the RX 66, which one is this? RX 6650 XT, which was actually a really good card the last time that we did this video. Again, 
good card this time around. $2.99 per frame at 1440p, providing on average 92 frames per second. So if you have a 1440p monitor, you're a 1440p gamer, this could be a really good option for you. I mean, it's not high refresh or mid to high refresh like 144 Hertz, but it is gonna provide a very solid experience for $274.99 right now. I think it was a bit cheaper last time we did this video, but only by about $25. In fact, if you had that same budget and you wanted to go NVIDIA, you wouldn't be able to buy something with that same level of rasterization performance. You would be with the RTX 3050 at $269.99, $5 Delta, but you'll be losing about 34 frames per second, which is a pretty tough pill to swallow. The best value card for NVIDIA 1440p ends up being the RTX 3060 Ti, the original one, released in December 2020. So if you don't need NVIDIA, it's realistically looking at these charts, one thing that I am noticing is that AMD is providing a significantly better value. I mean, there are reasons to go for NVIDIA. And when we break down which cards to buy at which different price levels, I will highlight both NVIDIA and AMD because you may do other things with your card that actually may require you to buy an NVIDIA GPU. So I don't want to ignore that and leave people out of this scenario. But we are just looking at pure rasterization performance with these graphs. But the one that actually surprised me a little bit was the RTX 4090 touted to be quite a good value GPU because although it's quite expensive, it gives you a lot of performance for that money. But the problem is in the retail market right now, you're not paying $1,600 for that card. You're paying just shy of two grand. And at two grand, it becomes the worst value card on this list, which is kind of crazy. In fact, the 3090 Ti is better value than a 4090, which none of the reviews will say if they quote MSRP but when you're not paying MSRP, MSRP is irrelevant. This is the data that actually matters. How much are you paying versus how much are you getting? And when the amount that you're paying is not the same amount that you've been quoted, we need to redo this calculation to something which is far more accurate and something which is far more relevant to you which is the entire reason why videos like this are so important. So for 1440p, this is what it looks like. So then let's move down into 4K. 4K tells a bit of a different story, actually. The worst value card is the RTX 3090, providing 103 frames per second of rasterization performance at a price of $1,400. And that equates to $13.59 per frame. In fact, the RTX 4090 ends up beating it. 4K gaming is a bit of a different beast and the 4090 is very good at it. So even at two grand, it becomes a better value proposition compared to the $1,400 3090. And the best value card ends up being the RX 6700 XT, which generates, what's that? Uh, 65 frames per second at 4K at a price of $359.99. Not bad. For NVIDIA 4K, the best value card is the RTX 3060 Ti. It generates on average 64 frames per second, which is a bit lower, I think, compared to, what do we have here? The 6700 XT. Oh, okay, 65 frames per second versus 64 frames per second. So they're basically on par with each other, but you are paying a premium of about 70 cents per frame. So before we get to the recommendations at a given price point, because I understand that you guys probably have a rough budget in mind. It's not as flexible as these graphs end up being. What I want to do is show you the 1080p results, the most popular resolution. As we mentioned before, everything is going to give you a pretty decent 1080p experience. So everything on this list should be a consideration. The only factor is what gives you the best value. In fact, let's start with the worst, which is the RTX 4090 again. I mean, it's a two grand card and it's gonna be running into bottlenecks of both CPU and potentially game engine. So you're paying a lot for that card to potentially not be using the full performance from it. It's a pretty poor recommendation at 1080p. What is a good recommendation at 1080p is, which one is this? At $2.08, the RX 6650 XT, which makes a ton of sense. This card has been pretty well discounted and it makes it a great performing card at that price range. And the best value card for NVIDIA at 1080p is the RTX 3060 Ti at a value of $2.77. It's about, what's that? That would be 60, 69, nice. More expensive per frame. 
but just because something has exceptional value doesn't necessarily mean that you can afford it, right? You likely have a specific amount of money saved and if your budget is $250, for example, you're unlikely to jump up to $1,000, regardless of the value proposition. So let's cover which are the best performing graphics cards for both Nvidia and AMD at $250, $500, up to $1,000 and over. So what I'm going to do for you guys to make this significantly easier for you is have the specific card shown here linked as a pinned comment in this video's description. I'll double check the pricing an hour before this video goes live and also update them daily until we do the next comparison video on this channel. And if I find something even better, I'll make sure to replace it in the comment section below. So make sure that you do check those out because things will likely change and they will be the most up to date. But let's start with our $250 budget. For AMD, the recommendation would be something in the region of the 6600 to 6650 XT range. And if you can find a 6700 non-XT for about that price, that would be an excellent option. The one that we found was the MSI Mech 6650 XT for $260 with a rebate card and a $15 promo, providing close to a 1080p mid to high refresh rate experience in most games, especially if you played around with the settings a little. But it's not just a 1080p card. Card. And if you have a 1440p monitor or want to potentially upgrade to one in the future, 92 FPS is incredibly playable. For Nvidia, you're looking at more like the RTX 3050, for which we found this PMY version at $270, providing a decent 1080p experience but may struggle at 1440p depending on the game. But what if you had a budget of say $500? Well, you would be able to jump up to the RX 6800 from AMD with this power color fighter coming in at $480. At 1080p, you would most often be exceeding the refresh rate of a 165Hz monitor, making this an excellent card to facilitate that experience. But at 1440p, this card also shines, providing close to the mid to high refresh 144fps mark in our test suite, and 4K results are definitely playable. The closest you can get from Nvidia right now is the RTX 3070, with this PMY version coming in at MSRP. Still a great card, but there is a performance delta in rasterized games of about 10% compared to the AMD card, which is also slightly cheaper. But where things start to get a bit more interesting is when we consider the up to $1,000 budget that starts to introduce the new generation. Honestly, for AMD, the RX 6950 XT is still a standout option because of the discount. It can be regularly had for around seven to $800 like this Gaming X Trio card from MSI, making 1440p 165Hz and even 4K games gaming definitely playable. You could step up to the 7900 XT and XTX, which do offer more performance if you need it, but currently, as the prices stand, offer worse value. Nvidia, on the other hand, is where the current generation starts to make a bit more sense, with the RTX 4070 Ti, especially when compared to high-end RTX 3000 prices right now. And for over $1,000, well, kind of depends on whether you can find a 4090 in stock at a quote-unquote reasonable price. But there may be one more option to consider, one that you may want to think about, like how we built a full gaming computer for $1,000 with an RTX 3080 inside. And you can check that out by clicking here. To get that price, we turned to the used market and followed this guide for making sure that you are protected for up to 90 days, which I feel is more than enough time to test the GPU. So make sure that you're protected when buying used by following this guide, if you want to take price to performance to the next level. Otherwise guys, share, like, subscribe, they are always appreciated and I hope you have an amazing day.